If you're a big swim team and you like to order a lot of gear, maybe you ought to check out Swim Outlet Team Division for these reasons. Swim teams receive a 10% discount on bulk orders. Swim teams or organizations get an 8% commission on referred sales. You'll also like their customization services, which is affordable and available at all times during the year for all team gear. With over 50,000 items in stock, you can get most anything you want. Swim Outlet Team Division. You need to try it out. You'll be glad you did. This is the Morning Swim Show for Thursday, September 4th, 2014. I'm your host, Jeff Cummings. Joining me today in the Finise Monitor will be Nova of Virginia head coach, Jeff Brown. It's not a stretch to say 2014 has been one of the team's best years in history, highlighted by the performances of Townley Haas. To talk about that and more, let's bring in Coach Brown via Skype from Richmond, Virginia. Hey coach, good to see you. How are you doing today? Doing fine, Jeff. How are you? I'm doing all right. Well, August was a busy month for your team. I hope you and your coaching staff had some time off before this new season started. Uh, yeah, we took some we took some shots, but I think we're ready to go again. Yeah, probably after the way you guys swam, it's it's probably uh, motivating and exciting to get started with another season. Sure, sure, made it easier. Absolutely, <laughs> the kids were great. Well, I want to start with junior nationals, where the team placed seventh overall. Uh, a lot of those points came from Town Lee Haas, who won the 100, 200, 400, and 800 freestyles, which is an amazing accomplishment. Uh, what kind of discussion was there between you and Town Lee about the possibility of winning these four events? Um, we, don't, we don't talk about, uh, about things like that. I mean, I know Town Lee loves to win, and, and that's, that's pretty much enough. I mean, we just talk about first thing, first step, let's get back in finals, and then we'll take it from there. I feel... When he gets a chance to race, uh, he'll be good. He takes it, he takes it to a new level. Well, I, I think he might have had the chance to win the 1500. Was there talk of him doing that one as well? The 1500, we felt that given that he was going to senior nationals the week after to earn a spot at junior pan packs, and then junior pan packs after that, very much, it, it wasn't an item for discussion. We had him swim it in in late July for the point of, of getting a time in this year. But other than that, it was just wanted to keep in mind that we were looking at a, at a, at a four week process and uh, four to five week process and wanted to make sure he survived that. So you guys had this that whole month already planned out before you even started? Well, I mean, yeah, hopefully planned out, I guess, <laughs> but we were certainly swimming with the thought of making junior pan packs in mind. but. Yeah, we had to do it over again. I think I would have done it a couple of, uh, some different ways, but he made it all work. Yeah, we'll, yeah. we'll go back in some more detail with Townley, but I want to talk about a couple of the other athletes that scored at Junior Nationals. Jesse Gavazas and Wade O'Brien um, also got some second swims in multiple events. Um, how did those two feed off the success that Townley was having? Well, I mean, they're, they're good friends. I think Jesse and Townley swim in the same lane together, so it was easy for them. And they'd been the juniors together last year, and they'd been to a number of meets together. So I think it was very easy. They swim similar events. Wade's a backstroker. He came on a lot this year in IM, and it was his first time. And we were kind of concerned about we swim indoors. So we were very much concerned about his outdoor backstroke, but Wade made it look easy, and he stayed straight. So all our concerns evaporated. Wow that's, wow, that's 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 very rare to happen. An indoor swimmer not hitting the lane lines in an outdoor meet. Is that just uh, was that a matter of technique, or was he really focusing on swimming straight down the lane? Oh, Wade just finds a way to get things done. So uh, I think it was just a matter of individual talent meeting up with the uh, the conditions. Well, that is really good. So and you had a couple other swimmers there for relay um, swims as well. Uh, you. Is the goal to get more swimmers to juniors um, next year, or even maybe even this December? Uh, one of the things we looked at is we try to put them in a meet where they're going to be successful. Um, these were the people who, some of them came to juniors for the first time. Some kids we elected to mostly stay at the NCSAs where we could look and, and see that they had a good chance of making finals. So, uh, and a couple of these kids, they, they had to go to this meet because they wanted to go on vacation. So th this was their terminating meet. Okay. Um, well, let's talk about that NCSA meet. Really good meet for the men. They got second place without, um, you know, timely contributions. Uh, you know, I saw firsthand how intense and how excited the team was at the short course NCSAs in Orlando. Uh, was it the same kind of vibe uh, in Indianapolis at the long course meet? 
I think it was a, a new vibe because in short course, they could all kind of rally behind the charge of Townley. They, they, they know how good Townley is. They know what he's good for. I mean, their nickname for him is Top Seed Townley. It's just a joke that, that they have. Uh, but they knew they were going to Indianapolis without him and that they would have to make up for his absence. They also knew that they were missing Stefan Erickson and Ted Schubert, who could have been at that meet, but as I said, elected to go on vacation. So they were very much into being a team that could win a banner there. That was their goal. And they knew what they didn't have and they knew what they had. What type of coach are you on deck? Are you the type who's very hands-on, or do you kind of step back and let your swimmers do their own kind of race preparation? Oh, it depends on the day. Uh, mostly I'm there to amuse them, so just try to make them laugh. And uh, I think they, they understand what they're supposed to do, and occasionally I have to remind them of what they're supposed to do. But uh, I think they're generally they're an intelligent bunch of kids who – understand what we're asking to do in training, and they embrace it. Do, do the Nova Virginia swimmers do a lot of in-season meets to get ready for that championship meet so that they get to that big meet and know what it's going to feel like? I don't think we swim a whole lot of meets in long course. We had some half meets, some whole meets. Um, I think they probably swam four meets in the long course season, in the short course season. Not, I'd have to think three, four. Yeah, maybe about five meets before we got to NCSA. So we don't swim a lot of meets, and there's really not too much high school swimming out here. So we're not talking about kids being overwhelmed with it with a meet lineup. So it sounds like a, a bunch of swimmers that are just naturally motivated when it comes to the big meet. Not, not a, you don't need to have them get a lot of race preparation. Well, I mean, they're they've gotten a lot of experience over the years and we kind of emphasize hey the meets we're going to let's let's make full use of them i mean we're, we will talk up a meet and make sure that we're not moving backwards we're not there to give excuses we're not there to talk about how tired we are we're talking about moving forward well uh to get back to townley a little bit i you talked about you know there were some things you wish you would have been able to do a little bit differently in august to get them ready for these these three big meets talk about that a little bit more that you some of the, maybe the things you wish you had done better? Well, uh, I mean, I think that once the, the beans were spilled to him that making one pan-pack event gave him all pan-pack events, I think it kind of took the edge off for him. And, and I think that, uh, that that was kind of an unfortunate detail that you have something helpfully shared with him. I understand that you had to tell him and all that good stuff. I mean, I... I I, I think had we known that and we had total confidence, we might have cut. We might have cut out of uh, seniors a little bit early, and just gone home to wait for pan packs. But that was probably the only thing that that we would have done differently. Just it was a long stretch for him to be there. It was a long stretch to be eating and in, in restaurants and being away from home. Yeah. So maybe just have him do the hundred free the first day, make the team, and and um, just go back home and give him some time to, to kind of refresh a little bit. Well, if I'd done that, I would have been supremely confident because, and he would have been, because the 100 free wasn't an event that he was really pegged to make that team. And we, you know, probably would have stayed around the, for the 200 free. There was a fairly good chance he would make it there. But even then, I mean, it, it would have been a gamble. And since this worked out, I'm, I'm not sure I can second guess, but so much. Yeah, I mean, he did really well in Hawaii. I mean, just to, to be able to, like I said, to be able to do three meets, Three taper meets in one month is really hard. I mean, even college swimmers don't even do that. So, um, you know, it, it, and, and just talk more about his talent. To be able to do the 100 all the way up to the 800 so well is especially rare. I mean, is this uh, a product of talent or hard work or both? I, I think it's very definitely a product of, of both. He also has it's a great set of parents. I don't know if he's quite realized that. It's a great set of parents. He's been well brought up. And I think his, uh, his parents do a great job of limiting his choices. So the choices that he has to choose from are all really, really good ones. I mean, I just, uh, they, have not, they have not backed off their task of parenting. And I think that shows. I mean, he has character. Uh, that's something that was given to him. And then the, the individual drive to want to win first is, is something, obviously, that he's developed over the years. When did you first notice that Townley was on the brink of, of something special? Gosh, I could laugh and say when he was in swim lessons, but I won't do that. 
Um, I, I, I mean, I, his the process of, of him developing as a swimmer has been so steady that if we said we noticed it one day, it would have meant we were missing it the day before. So I'm not really sure. He just kind of flowed like a river into getting better. Each, each time he raced, you could see that he wanted to win. I suppose maybe a moment that told me that he really wanted to be good was at NCSA Juniors, not this year, but the previous year. In the 500 free, he decided he'd go out. We talked about a race plan. He completely ignored it. And he went out and he raced Reed Malone for about 250, 300 yards and then really suffered coming home. It was that point, uh, Coach Mark Kutz and I just looked at one another and said, well, you know, he obviously knows more than we do. He wants to challenge himself. And, and you know, we kind of knew that from that point onward that he liked being first and he would rather raise the first place person and fail than have a fancy plan and end up a second faster. Yeah. Yeah. And I like that nickname, Top C Townley. He definitely proved that at juniors. <laughs> well, as I said, this was a great year for, for Nova, Virginia. Is there, what's the biggest lesson that you've learned about yourself as a coach from this past year? Gosh, I mean, uh, the lesson's ongoing. And I suppose the lesson is, is, is how, how much the success of our swimmers is dependent on this great chain, this great link of, of coaches that we have who have experience and talent and really know how to bring a child to each level of the program. As we see these swimmers who have been brought up so well, if you will, by our coaches, as they emerge into the upper levels of our program, they're ready to go. And, and I think that just fills me with, with great confidence. Some of them were may not have been, they were not strip mined to be fast, younger. They were developed so that when they came into the senior program, they could ex they could explode or they, they could continue on their path of success. And I give great credit to all the people I coach with. I mean, they're, they're, they're awesome. It definitely yeah. seems that way. Well, I know you're anxious to get ready for this fall season. Before we let you go, Jeff, we want to submit you to our final five. These are five questions we ask our guests on the Morning Swim Show. So the first question for you is, which swimming celebrity would you like to trade lives with for one day? Um, flipper. <laughs> okay, not the swimmer we had in mind, but a swimmer all the same. Uh, which non-swimming celebrity would you like to trade lives with for a day? Um, John Julius Norwich. Hmm. Who is that? I've never heard that name before. Uh, he's an author, and uh, he was an author of a number of books. I've just I've admired his work, been entertained by it. He's written books on Venice, Byzantium, the Norman world, just the Mediterranean world, and I just um, really enjoy his his writing style. I know it's an odd answer, but it's the first person I can think of. That's great. It's a great answer. Uh, besides this year, what's a year of your life that you would like to relive? Uh, gosh, the year I got remarried. What year was that? Uh, oh, why did you do that to me? <laughs> um, it, it, it's, it was, it will be six years ago, 2009. Okay. Uh, what's your favorite movie? Uh, probably, uh, gee, Dune. Nice. Very nice. And last question for you. What's your favorite season? Oh, definitely, uh, definitely summer. Even I would, have, I would have thought fall in Virginia with the leaves changing would be beautiful, but summer in Virginia like, is awesome too. I like being warm. That's why I got into this profession. <laughs> I understand that too. Well, Coach, this has been great talking to you. Congratulations on a great summer. We're looking forward to a great fall, great winter. We're looking forward to seeing your kids again at NCSAs in Orlando. Thank you very much, Jeff. Appreciate it. All right. Have a good day. Okay, you too. Bye-bye. And that is our show for today. You can go to our video archives at SwimmingWorld.tv to catch up on any episodes of The Morning Swim Show you might have missed and watch all of our video programming as well. Maybe you might get caught up in a weekend of binge-watching The Morning Swim Show. I'm Jeff Cummings. Thanks for watching.